reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal regions of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and exalt you, and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice, and live for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will be grave and weak. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the media, some of you may know that two weeks ago, in my native Vietnam, a Dominican priest, Father Joseph Tan, was killed while administering God's mercy through the sacraments of reconciliation. The killer would use a knife to slash father's head twice. Father Joseph's death may be seen as a short and unlucky life for those who do not have faith. But it is a wonderful death if we look at it in the light of today's Gospel. He died as he was practicing the ministry. He died while giving reconciliation to sinners. Father Joseph lived the whole life of poverty, completely belonging to the order of the Dominicans and to God. He has suffered persecution and testified for Christ. I am sure now he is receiving the reward as promised by Jesus in the Gospel. Today's Gospel is so confronting and challenging Despite being people who are poor, hungry, weeping, and hatred, blessed, fortunate, or happy is very odd. Do we believe that people who are poor and hungry are really happy? Because of the words of Jesus are contrasted with our daily experiences, we must consider these words in the context of the religious teaching so that we may understand why they are blessed and rewarded by God. The poor in spirit that Jesus proclaims in the Gospel must be understood in the sense of poverty for the sake of the kingdom and happiness of others. Jesus does not advocate to be poor he doesn't consider poverty as a value or an ideal. He does not say that material deprivation is worthy of blessing. The 
The poor in spirit does not rely on money or power, but only know how to put all its trust in God. We will be blessed if we are those who realize that happiness cannot be found by relying on material possessions, but by putting our complete trust in God. If we live the true spirit of poverty, we can measure how easily the passing of money and material possessions can be. We can see the poverty of others. We can easily sympathize and share with them. In the Beatitudes, Jesus helped us to understand that God is, in fact, on the side of the poor and suffering. When Jesus says, Woe to you who are rich, he makes clear that the rich have a great deal to lose, but the poor have nothing. Therefore, the rich must try harder to receive salvation, because they remain possessed by their possessions and privileges. They are unable to receive the gifts of salvation, but they can enjoy the blessing through their care of the poor. They must prepare an empty place for the grace of God to fill. Because the poor and suffering are fortunate, since they have a need which the overflowing generosity of God can fill. They are in situations which a child God's impures to set. The kingdom of God is already among the poor. When saying, Blessed are the poor, the hungry, and those who weep and suffer because they are excluded and exalted by the world. Is Jesus trying to say that the poor should continue to live in their poverty? Jesus does not want to buy people a state of poverty and suffering. Instead of that, he wants us to understand that even when we have to live in these negative circumstances, as a result of a social injustice or even a death of a human being, we are loved by God and can still open our hearts to receive the salvation which He gives to everyone. Hence, poverty and suffering are blessed because through them, human beings encounter God and are saved. In other words, the rich are not punished for being rich. And the poor and suffering are not rewarded because of poverty and suffering. Everyone is invited and must strive to live the gospel of love and sharing to gain eternal life. In today's readings, the Lord has shown us the way to find happiness. The difficulty that Jesus shows us to understand and accept is the paradox of these Beatitudes. That very paradox is resolved in the spiritual realm with the eyes of faith. Accordingly, people cannot rely on themselves or on others to achieve true happiness. But only those who rely on God, knowing how to put all their trust in Him with love and gratitude. Jesus, in fact, speaks of the contrast between rich and poor. So, wealth and poverty, which one is good or bad? Does happiness lie in wealth or poverty? Many reality experiences
this show us that happiness does not lie in wealth or poverty. However, rich or poor is only a means for people to achieve happiness, to achieve eternal life. Whether to achieve happiness or not depends on the attitude of each person, that is, to use those means to be worthy in accordance with God's will, like the examples of Father Joseph's death that I mentioned today. Surely, each of us must say that it was a beautiful life, a valuable death, and a glorious martyrdom for the kingdom of God. He lived the Beatitudes perfectly. We are all poor in the sight of God, but God is not poor. Therefore, God does not encourage us to live in poverty, much less encourage those who become poor because of laziness. God only encourages those who voluntarily live poorly for the sake of the kingdom. He wants us to live in poverty by giving God what we have. And that is our sincerity, our trust, so that God takes control of our lives and gives us His reward, which is eternal life. Amen.